Well, and, and it feels like that, and it comes across in all of it. it. And every time I look at it, it just, it. I expect that it, I feel like it's going to be around for a long time, and or I hope it's going to be around for a long time. And it's really interesting to approach, I mean, we were on the phone a couple weeks ago talking about the new story, and I was, he was telling me what, what it was going to be so I could, um, you know, get a cover going. And um, there's so much jammed into this new story. But when he'll say something, it'll make me think of, of something else. And he was like uh, taking, you know, like we had actually good give and take, which up until this point, it's mostly been, um, you know, Evan will deliver me a completely finished script. It's very meticulous. I mean, he's, we're both people that have written and illustrated our own work. You know, it's like I write and, and draw my stuff, and then he writes and draws his stuff and letters, and I letter and everything. So it's like we're both super control freaks about what we do and how we approach things, and our approaches couldn't be any more different. You know, um, the, the way that, I mean, he is so encyclopedic about, uh, about everything. And while I know a lot of stuff, I don't keep such good records of things. <laughs> and, um, but I was able to make some suggestions as far as, you know, and it's another thing, when he would say something, I would see a series of pictures in my head, and that's really hard um, not to, to not contribute. Sure. Um, because it's, you know, he'll have a great idea and I'll know immediately how I would break it down into a story page. It may not be where he's going with it, but I think that comes from being your own creator of your own your own stuff. So it's like, I have a way I like to tell a story and he has a way he likes to tell a story. So um, I'm, I'm able to talk to him about, it's like, okay, Evan, before you go any further, this is how I would break that down, <laughs> which then sparked him to do something else. But also, you know, the one of the things he was mentioning is the fact that, you know, they are dogs. So it's like, first of all, you want them to have all these adventures, but then you have to de real, like, deal with the limitations of them being dogs and either work around how, you know, how they they would do things in the town or the fact that they have masters that they have to either, like, get away from all the time or or what happens, you know, they, there's a lot of times they have no control over their life. And he's going to address a lot of that, which is really interesting, and then show a lot of other, you know, other neighborhood animals and, you know, animals are uh, much more short-lived than human beings, and different sized animals last longer than other sized animals. Just, you know, like, I didn't know that super big dogs, like, live less long than yeah. teeny little dogs. Um, so that's going to be some a, a factor, I think, at, at some point, and you know, and veterinary it's visits and all sorts of things that you know they have no control over. But you'll see, hear them comment on comes from their kind of point of view. Wow, really, just cool. You know, yeah. I mean, I would never thought about things in that way before. Well, and I, I, it's great because it does. It just really sparks people thinking about things like that. So, do you expect at some point to be approached by? PETA to, to kind of use the series at, at well to, to support their efforts? I don't expect anything. <laughs> um, I know that when I've done signings and when I do signings for Beasts of Burden, I did one in Chicago and I was doing sketches but I, all the money that I usually get um, like if, for a commission sketch I was having the shop donate to um, the local, one of the local no-kill sh shelters. It was like the pets are worth saving one. So I just figured, you know, in June when the hardcover comes out, if I do signings too, like if people bring me into their shop or, or whatever, if, it, or if I'm, you know, across the country, if I fly in there, it's like, yeah, I will do the same thing for their local no-kill shelter. You know, so it's because I want to help. I love animals. But well, that's awesome. That's really great. Thank you. Um, so, not to kind of move us away, but I, I, I know we've got limited time with you, so... <laughs> Talk all day long. There's no problem. We're, but we're let's always... move on to other types of comics, if that's what yeah. you want to do. Well, no, what I wanted to ask you actually was, uh, what's your first or earliest comic memory? You know, and it doesn't necessarily have to be work, just the first memory. You're asking questions nobody else asks. I got tired of those other questions. My first comic memory yeah. is um, comic book or comics? Whatever, kind of anything in the kind of comics field. Um, first comics memory, Peanuts. Uh, first comic book memory, Archie. Um, that. 
and that's when I was like, oh, look at this. I need all of these. Um, it was, there was a house two doors down from my family growing up, and they were moving the house across the town. So they were having a huge sale of getting rid of like all of their possessions. So, because they were gonna pick, the, pick it up and put it on a truck and move it down the street, which was cool to see as a kid, um, but. Was this a state without basements? No. Oh, no. Oh, no, because then when, when the house moved, then me and my brother and the neighborhood kids would jump around and we played in the basement and the whole area that was like there the, for two houses, because they put in a parking lot. Nice. Um, but it was all, you know, muddy and yucky, but there were still treasures down, like, in the basement because, so when we played war and, all, you know, all sorts of, Speed Racer, we'd play that a lot. Um, you know, like, you run around and you're like, oh, we have to get, a, so you'd run around and then fall into the hole and that would be like, oh, oh, oh. But, but anyway, um, my purchase from their giant garage sale was an orange crate box filled with comics. And there were Archie comics. <laughs> Old ones like Dan DiCarlo art, uh, like all this great Betty and Veronica stuff. Even really old like stuff from the 40s. Little Archie, which has been some of my favorite all the time, with Bob Balling, and so that's like my first comic comic memory. Um, and then when my father saw that I really liked comics, he would uh, he would go to the newsstand and pick me up comics on Friday. And we'd bring them home, and if I saw him come home with like the green. Um, the green little baggie, yeah. and it was you know holding like a book, and uh, I knew that you know sometimes it was just his newspaper from work, but then I, if I could see the edge of the little bag, that it was like that I might get comics, and um, sometimes when there weren't Archies available, because it was just you know you'd go to the newsstand and he'd pick out what was new. He picked up a couple of superhero comics, which I thought were scary at the time, because they had scary guys on the front of them. They were always going, ah, or beating people up, or there was like, you know, you'd open it up and it was in the middle of some giant Marvel thing already, so there was like some war happening. And I remember there being a Thor one and uh, some something else. Oh, and then an X-Men. And th that was the thing, is like, I avoided those comics for the longest time, but my brother and I would come home from school for lunch and we would read through the Archie comics like we'd sit and eat and read the comics but if you do that every day eventually you have the thing memorized and we would like go to the step what we would do is we'd reach down to the bottom of the pile and pull that one out because it was older and we might have forgotten what happened in that one but eventually it didn't matter how many times you reached down to the bottom of the pile you would look at the cover and go Oh, that's the one where, you know, Big Ethel chases Jughead and Moose beats up the guy because Midge is seeing him and out and like... So, I reached in and got that scary comic. And got hooked. And pretty much that's been it for the rest of my life. And went from different genre, different genre of comic to making my own. And from that point, it's like I knew that's what I wanted to do.